stuff. And as part of Willem's training for the film, we learned techniques like how to move across the landscape so mm. animals don't hear you, you know, how to use what's around you to build your traps and snares. So it's kind of paradoxical because, you know, he's at both well, one with nature, he understands nature, he thinks like an animal, but his business there is essentially very destructive. Um, so what we wanted to speak about was really the uneasy relationship that has always existed between mankind and the natural environment. Mm -hmm. um, and this, you know, this story of what happened with the Tasmanian tiger is, is a great kind of historical case in point, but that story is continuing with the, the battle to save the, the native forests, which you see in the film, yeah. and the conflict that's going on between the, the loggers and the, the environmentalists. Was it difficult to get permission to use that um, natural footage from the zoo in the last Tasmanian tiger? Um, th that footage, that wasn't difficult to get hold of. Um, it's quite famous footage. There's, yeah. there's like maybe like eight or ten minutes of footage in existence, yeah. you know, in the world of the Tasmanian tiger when it was alive. And um, that footage was partly owned by the Hobart Museum and partly owned by the National Film and Sound Archives. You know, like one frame belongs to someone and one frame belongs to someone else. So we had to go to both bodies for permission. Um, when they sent us up, you know, what they said was like the best quality master available on like an HD cam or something. Uh, it was really bad quality. I mean, it was a very low res digitized image. So we actually, and this was the coup, we got them to send up the original 16 mil print and we made a new, you know, high def, um, uh, digi you know, digitization of it, and so those images are now, you know, no, no one's ever seen them projected like that before. You know, since the 1930s. 